keep it very fairy tale we're, at the we're, moment. We're, we're live. I'll we're bring out a book in ten years' time and <laughs> and smash it with that, and if they will, they'll all be like, "We thought you you had a nice." Okay, sound is back, guys. So sorry to cut you off, honey. Um, I was asking you about your childhood, what it was like for you growing up as a child, and um, you were going to say. Um, so I was very, I was very, very lucky to be honest. Um, I grew up in central London, so I grew up in Labrock Grove. It was rough. Um, but when you grow up around that, you don't know anything different. You know, you don't know what else to to relate it to. So. Um, it was just the norm for me, really. Um, but we was we was very very lucky at the same time. My grandparents that lived in Devon, um, so we used to spend all our half terms and our Christmases and birthdays and all that sort of thing in the countryside, where we'd be walking down country lanes and going down to the farmers and you know watching the cows being milked and all that sort of thing, you know. So it was really like we were we were country bumpkin kids at the same time as being very much city kids as well. So yeah, we um I think it's it's a beautiful balanced way to grow up whereas um a lot of kids don't don't get that, you know. So I always felt I didn't realize how lucky I was to have that until I got older, basically. Okay. Fair enough. Um so yeah. So you mentioned you mentioned so it sounds like you had like a really cool chilled privileged childhood and then I hear you start talking about um pole dancing for Spearman Rhino. <laughs> Was it Spe is it Spearman Rhino? Yeah. It was Spearman Rhino, yeah. I was there for about three years, just under okay. three years. How did you get into that then? What what made you decide to like get into that? Oh, do you know what, Bruce? It's um it's a bit of a mad one really, right? Dan, I don't know whether you can relate to this at all. But I always wanted to do it from when I was really young. And I know that sounds a little bit fucked up because I've never ever been into a strip club before. I put I blame it on films basically. But I just, from the age of about 13, 14, like, I just, I, I think I must have seen it on TV or something and just thought, wow, that looks amazing. Yeah. And I was always a bit of an attention seeker as well growing up. So it just, I just wanted to do it. I just, I was very drawn to it. And I'd never been in a strip club before. Um, but I was always like, I had a little bit of a tomboy side to me growing up as well. I always got along with guys more than I got along with girls girls I always found were a bit more bitchy and I was a bit more rough and tumble so I just kind of related to guys a little bit more in some ways um and uh, yeah so from the age of 19 I was just I was still 18 actually when I left hairdressing I just qualified my hairdressing wow. um in a really really prestigious <laughs> hairdressers and my mum's a hairdresser as well so she was um Let's just say she wasn't happy about me leaving hairdressing to go and pursue taking my clothes off for a living. So oh, I was going to get that was going to be my next question. What have your family thought of some of your career choices and decisions that you've made and stuff like that? Because I, I spoke to a girl recently and she was like, she's from Cornwall. And I'm like, how on earth yeah. is an 18 year old girl from Cornwall getting to sort of like OnlyFans and stuff like that? And yeah. she was just like, well, she, was, she, she actually converted me. She was like, um, Cornwall's not as nice as you think. When people go there, they just see the coastal area and everything. But she said it's actually pretty yeah. tough. But back to you, um, you know, what did your, how, did, how, have you, how have you managed to like keep your family relationships together and everything? And, you know, what, what are they? Um, decisions? It's, uh, again, very, very lucky because I started dancing from such a young age. Mm hmm. Um, I was completely open from then about what I was doing. Uh, so my mum fully knew, uh, my whole family knew, and it was always kept very open. I mean, it got to the point, I think a year into dancing, my mum used to come up to Spearman and she used to come out the back and she used to chill with us girls and all the girls would be like, your mum is so cool. I'd be wow. mortified if my mum knew. And she, but my mum would be standing there getting her spray tan done. <laughs> And we 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 um, we had a laugh with her one day because I mean there was a lot of girls I used to dance with. It was the biggest strip club in the whole of London at the time. It was rivaled with uh, with string fellows, and um, and basically uh, we uh, we said to the one of the DJs, DJ Dave, and we said, Dave, call my mum onto the main stage. I dare you to call my mum onto the main stage. And he was going, Kathy onto the main stage, Kathy, and she was like, so everyone just thought she was brilliant because she's my mum's just so down to earth. So um, I was very, very lucky in that respect. I've always been very open with things and with my webcam modelling uh, history as well. And, yeah, it, I, I can't imagine how difficult it must be for some girls that are, you know, only just getting into it. Whatever age you are, it's always going to be difficult breaking that to your family, you know. So, yeah, that must be tough. 
Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a break for a second now. There is a question that's st stim simulated on my screen at the minute. I've got a, a random question simulator. It's nothing crazy. Um, I had a, I've just I've just seen it. Uh, Danny, I'll go. I'll, I'll send it to you. What's something you know you know now that you wish you knew ten years ago? What's something I know now that I wish I knew ten years ago? Yeah. Not to be with um for me. But just for you, just for you, yeah. Yeah, not to be not to be um, in addiction, and that I wish I could rewind ten years ago so I could have I would have a fresh start again. Okay, what what sort of choices? What sort of different choices would you make that maybe you know led you to your sort of? Well, I certainly wouldn't be an addict. <laughs> that would be Stefan's first choice. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'll send that straight over to you then, honey. Something you know now. Something you know now that you wish you knew ten years ago. Oh gosh, um, I would probably say be prepared because your closest people may end up being literally your biggest fucking haters. Yeah. And you, you just don't think about it at the time and especially if you've had friends for a long period of time as well. Um, people can turn on you. I think, well, people change. You either grow together whatever type of friendship or relationship you're in with with whoever you either grow together or you don't um so sadly these things happen don't they but yeah i mean there's a lot of things well marriage doesn't last <laughs> that's another thing as well <laughs> Learned that one the whole way. <laughs> um oh gosh i could give you a list of things but they're definitely two at the top Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so you mentioned marriage. Um, I'm not going to have a deep dive in it, but just basically talk to us a little bit, you know, about because obviously you said you're a sing, you're 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 are you saying you're a single mum now? I remember if you think you were saying. To me. I am. I am a single mum. I love being a mum. I've I've done it on my own on and off throughout the years. Anyway, it's just second nature, as I can imagine with you that you're single, you single mum as well. You just do it, don't you? They're your kids, yeah. and you just crack on with it. Um, it's hard, but that's life, and it's cool. Um, it's mad because I spent the best part of about 13 years in three back-to-back -back relationships where we were either having kids, engaged or married. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so I've come out of that a couple of years ago. And I mean, my son is 15 now. I don't ever want to bring another man into my son's life. The only ever uh, other men I ever brought into my son's life was when I was engaged to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm... Um, I'm just at that point where I want a bit of life for me now, you know, and when the kids get a bit older, I'm like, like you know, you just get that sense of freedom back again. And you almost, I almost feel like I'm starting to pick up where I left off at the age of 21. Yeah. Like but with an old head. Yeah. Like you get a bit of self, you've got to have a bit of self-development and hundred percent, hundred percent love yourself. Yeah. And start be and be who you want to be. Yeah. A hundred percent. And no fucks given. Um, you only get this one life and you just got to grab it with both hands and just I want to experience everything life has to offer and when you've dedicated your life to raising kids and having a family and being a house yeah. house mum or you know a wife and, and, and running a home and, and working at the same time and, and raising your kids you are dedicated you are you put yourself at the bottom of the list you do it willingly um, but when they get older time for you do you know what I mean so but it it's a very fine balance at the moment because I didn't um, plan to be opening an OnlyFans account so soon. I wanted to wait until my son was in college. So that's like another six months time. But as I've started to put myself out there a little bit, just kind of figuring out social media and testing the waters with things, mm -hmm. I had no idea or expectation that it was going to blow up the way it has over the last sort of six weeks. So I've had a conversation with my son. He's happy with it. He's like, mum, go do your thing. I've got you. So if that basically the bottom line is if at any point um I'm ever doing anything that's detrimental to my son, yeah kind of off. Yeah. I'll 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 close every account down in, in an instant and just be done with it, you know. So it's all about him. Yeah. You seem so, like you're in a quite a privileged position. I mean you said your family is very supportive and and your yeah. son's very supportive. I mean, I've got a fifteen year old son as well and if if, if his mum if it, yeah, if his mum if his mum mentioned something like that, you might um he might he might have something to say about it, you know. But um yeah. you seem like you and your son have a really strong relationship where you sort, oh, you sort of just I think that's so tight. Yeah. Uh, things it sounds it sounds really strong it does sound really beautiful the sort of relationship that you've got don't yeah start, don't start crying now i can see you well enough a little bit <laughs> oh 
Don't give it, Brucey, baby. Yeah, you might make you might make me cry. No, seriously, don't, because this mascara is oh, very, barely enough. holding on as it is. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, um, let's talk about experiences within the the stripping industry at the minute then. Sort of oh, what? fuck. Okay, go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's what do you want to know? There's a I lot. Mean, obviously, there's a, there's a perception out there that if you go to a strip club and... Um, you go to the back room, you get a dance, whatever, um, and if you pay a and you get, extra, you get DJ. You, you... Well, I'll, I'll tell you a, a deep story, right? So, um, obviously, I worked at Spearmint, and it was in Tottenham Court Road, so it was their biggest central club. And I started it at the tail end of the, the heyday of dancing and only about sort of two years a year before I started so that's going back 20 years ago um they had had a massive uh dispute um where basically they had been accused of a lot of the girls going out the back or going up there was apparently these uh, private rooms somewhere I mean I worked there three years I don't know where these private rooms were that people were talking about that were so yeah. hidden um but anyway so basically, it turns out that Peter Stringfellow had put these stories out to try and sabotage Spin Rhino because it was his rival club. Okay. So basically, there was this massive court case that went on and um, they Spearmint got a load of their girls to testify and that sort of thing. And that court case had only come to a close about a year before I started. So I, the first year I started, it was really, really busy, raging, easy to make money. And then as the second year and then the third year came, it became a lot harder. There was a massive influx and I'm not racist at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. But there was a, a lot of sort of foreign girls coming over. There was a massive influx of foreign girls that came over. Yeah. And um, what was happening was a lot of girls were offering to do extras outside the club for half the price of what we were asking, charging for just the dancing to them. The dance. yeah, okay. So it suddenly overnight became so much harder to earn money. Yeah. Um, so that was like my cue to get out, to be honest. And then I met my son's dad and we decided we wanted a kid and I left. So it was time for me to go. It was just, you know, that, that was, that was my path and it was meant to happen like that but god knows what it's like now to be honest <laughs> i think i think yeah. Everything, yeah i think it's all gone to only fans now to be fair um literally yeah. gone. we will go into that a little bit later a little bit like towards the end of this you can obviously I, I tell you i tell you something guys right so there's there's one thing so it with dancing um and obviously a lot of what's going on now with uh, social media with the whole only fans thing and webcaming and stuff like that you know, now we're doing things through a screen. It's very, very protected. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but when it comes to dancing, you're face to face with someone. You know, it's a physical, a real physical thing face to face. So, this, you know, it, it's a lot more risky. You can get people following you home. I was attacked really badly um, not long before I left there as well, where I was followed. Um so yeah, I um, it's it's funny only because and I'm only bringing this up because I've had such mixed reviews from people about me at 28 now doing earning money through a screen compared to when I was dancing, and they had absolutely no problem with me dancing and getting my vagina out at the age of 19. Yeah. Yet they're so upset with me taking a few pictures of myself through a screen for money. So it's it's weird, isn't it? Because it was like. Back in the day, the whole da the whole pole dancing thing, it was so glamorized yeah. and, you know, when really it's not that glamorous, you know? So, yeah, anyway, that's I, that. I really love your confidence, though, because I wouldn't, on my fifth, they wouldn't let me do that. Yeah. They would hate me and it would cause so much drama upon everybody that is in my family. Oh, bless you, yeah. But, I think like good for each and every individual. Like if you if you feel that's your road to go down, then like you know some people get jealous, don't they? Yeah. And then people, if I see someone with a smile on their face and it's working for them, then I say go for it. Yeah, fuck it. You know, I'm not. I'm never going to be one to dictate to anyone what they do in their life. So, yeah. I mean, do you know what? Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Even the arseholes of this world are entitled to their opinion. Um, and one of the things, I barely had any hate, any trolling or anything on my accounts. I've just literally, like, yeah. tempted fate now, haven't I? I'm going to get <laughs> shit loads of hate now for the rest of the day. Yeah? You All know. right, cool. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so, um, but yeah, I've not really had any of that. Any shitty comments I've had, I've just been super nice about it because I just think, you know what? I'm cool. Like, I know how to handle that. Yeah. Whereas I'd rather them be shitty to me on my page than go and be shitty to some young girl that's doing it that's just yeah. hasn't developed the tools to learn how to deal with situations like yeah. this. Whereas I've got such thick skin from dealing with this yeah. on and off over 20 years. It don't bother me. It literally goes straight over my head. I actually quite like it. I, I like it that I'm so relevant to these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you took things to heart, if you was one of them that took things to heart too much, it's not yeah. for you. No, it's not for you. Yeah, yeah. you can't. You've got to be really strong. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. i just got one more question on the stripping, on the stripping part. Um, go on then, babe. What, what is it like on your first night when you have to sort of like go on? Obviously, you train and everything. But what is it like on that? Can you can you remember your first night on the I job? fucking can remember my first night. I will never forget it. <laughs> I will never forget it. Okay, right. So, so basically, I remember my first. I remember my first and my last dance. I can't really remember the rest. Yeah. But the first guy, and he was this this little Indian guy, and he was really sweet. Was really really drunk. He was really, really drunk, right? And I'm chatting away to him and everything, and I was like, do you want some water? I was like trying to give him water, and the, the waitresses were like, don't give him water. Make him buy another bottle of champagne. I was like, I know, but he can barely fucking stand up. <laughs> I can't even get him into the room to take him for a dance. So I managed to drag him in the room, right? And he's kind of like sitting there dribbling, and I've just carried on dancing, and I'm like five, five dances later, and I'm like, I've got to check that this geezer's even got any money to pay for this because he's incoherent at this point. Um, so yeah, he's paid me and everything, but I just remember standing in that booth and at Spearmint we had quite big booths where you could fit between sort of four and six people whilst with dancers dancing at the same time. Um, and I remember just being in that booth, there's no one else in it and it's kind of like a little bit open plan as well. And I remember looking out and thinking, I'm standing here naked and everyone's walking past and it's so cool. No one gives a fuck. There's another girl over there naked, another girl. And I just felt so free mm -hmm. yeah. and just very, yeah, very exciting. But Not now I'll never forget that feeling of just like, shit, this is, I'm, I'm all about this. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> no, I, I, can't even, I can't even imagine because like I watch the movies and stuff like that, and you see the strippers on their first night and stuff. Most of the time, they like get drunk or whatever and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's always been a curious curiosity of mine. <laughs> Danny, yeah, you, you know what? I I am um, I never I I used to hate getting drunk there. I used to get fucked up when I'd leave there. Okay. Um, but I always saw it as business. I'm very focused when it comes to business and money, mm -hmm. and so I would hate getting drunk there so I'd pretend to drink my drinks I'd pour it away and as I clocked on to how everything works I used to rinse the shit out of them and just kind of like get them getting loads of champagne and stuff but they would obviously always want to encourage me to drink and get fucked where I'd have to sort of pretend sometimes that I was a bit fucked because mm -hmm. I if I started getting too drunk I would just want to party with them and mm -hmm. it's just the whole making money thing went out the window I just wanted to be their mate do you know what I mean so I had to keep that balance of not getting too fucked or too high but as soon as I'd leave there then I'd go out raving and I'd get off completely off my fucking head so <laughs> yeah it's um finding that balance would you, would you would you go into the porn industry if you was asked no 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 this I are uh, I have got nothing against like yeah. full on porn and doing that solely for a living. Yeah. I don't know exactly the levels that I'm going to go to on my OnlyFans yeah. as it is um, right now. But um, just, yeah, doing OnlyFans, I have pure control over that. Yeah. Whereas I know in the porn industry, I wouldn't. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, I'm a bit of a control freak. So I like to know where I stand with everything at all times. So. Yeah. This OnlyFans is probably my limit. Yeah. Not in We but, um, and stuff on there, then can't you? Yeah. You know, you're safe, but yeah, exactly. You still won't be worried about stalkers, though, because this is it massively, stalkers, massively. Would worry me. Yeah, and it does. It, yeah. it, it is a massive fear, and I'm very, very careful. Um, so yeah, I mean, you always, you're always gonna have a a, a fear of anyone getting too attached and becoming some kind of nutter or stalker or anything yeah. in whatever you do in life mm -hmm. and from where 
I sort of touched base on it briefly earlier where I was attacked really badly at the last sort of year that I was dancing and that that was that was from a nutter and um so I am neurotic when it comes to I mean I don't even now and that's 20 years ago even now I drive everywhere I don't get public transport you know even with cabs I don't like getting cabs I'd rather go out and drive and not drink that night and then have a drink when I get home. And I'm yeah. so cool with that. And I'm just overly cautious. And that keeps me yeah. safe and I'm cool, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Yeah. Cool. You I, mentioned... love, I love you. Sorry, Danny. Sorry. Yeah. Now, but I was just going to say I love the confidence. And the oh, fact thank you, you that, And right. the fact that you've got all that support. I think it's great that you've got all that around you. Yeah. Thank you. And I think you're fucking amazing as well. Just from the little I know about you and, and heard about you, it sounds like you've as a rough road babe and you. you know you you seem like a really lovely girl so okay. I'm, I'm you know. an <laughs> babe we're all capable of being arseholes but <laughs> yeah we know oh, it no, so it's all right yeah <laughs> yeah danny's got a fascinating story really to be honest I've, i did do an interview of her as well it's on it is on the channel as well but we, we all oh my god her. i'll have to have a look yeah, i'm yeah. gonna have a look yeah, she's had, she's had, she's had, she's been through some hard times, isn't you, Danny? And you're, you're, you're yeah, she's, I don't, you, it, don't let the past no long no. hold me back. No. I, if people ain't gonna vibe with, like a support me, then I'll just, yeah. you know, they're irrelevant to me. And yeah. I think the haters, you're just pushing me to do better. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. It almost gives you more power, doesn't it? It's yeah, almost like yeah. you want them to hate you, like hate yeah. me with a passion, please, yeah. because it actually gives me so much life. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me know. So, yeah. So you mentioned OnlyFans at the minute. So there's this is the hot topic at the minute. Men are going round, you know, saying. Um, sorry, babe, you're breaking up a lot. Yeah. Sorry, can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Just about. Oh hello. Let, let me have to get. Let me get some hand to mic action. I love your flowers in the back there, Danny. Aye. I love your flowers in the back there, Danny. I keep looking oh, at your I'll flowers. I love. I love there. a bunch of roses as well. Oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, good. See, you're my kind of girl you are, babe. You've got my taste. Yeah, I, I love my table and that. <laughs> is, my, is my sound better now, guys? I can. Yeah, see. thank it's you, hon. It's better, yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. I was going to say, there's obviously a, um, a big thing at the minute with obviously a lot of women are turning to OnlyFans at the minute and um, there's a lot of people like pointing fingers saying um, women that do OnlyFans, they shouldn't be doing it and all the rest of it. What would you guys say to them? Do you want to go first, Dan? I, don't, I think everyone, if they, if they want to do it or they, they're trying it, I'll, I'll say good luck to everyone in doing whatever they want to do. I'm not one exactly. to judge. Yeah, I think if it makes them happy, yeah, a lot of money for it, go for it. Yeah, yeah. and you have absolutely. I just, I think, like I said, everyone's entitled to their opinion, their, their opinion, and that's absolutely fine. But what anyone does with their body and with their time is up to them. It just feels like in this day and age, we're all losing the the, the power of free free speech. Do you know what I mean? And it's like you know, you, you people feel like they're entitled to label you with a certain thing. Yeah. Which they can, but if it's not true, you, I don't know. It's either going to make you stronger that that sort of um, resistance from people, or it's not. Um, and if it doesn't make you stronger, then you shouldn't be in the industry anyway. So I can think it's a good test, you know, to have a bit of shit at the beginning, to you know, to to sort of push you to that level to see if it's going to break you or not. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just um I just think you've got to go for these things in life. You've got to try it. If you want to do it, fucking do it. Yeah, do um it. for me for me personally, um I've got a plan, I've got goals and targets with it that I want to hit and then I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. Um what you were saying about porn earlier, I mean never say never, but yeah. no. It's not it's not for me. Well, I mean, listen, if I make it, right, you heard it here first, if I make it, which I really hope I do, or at least just make enough money to get myself out of debt, that'd be lovely. Um, so if I if I made it uh, and in a year or two years time and I've had a really good run of it and I've done well out of it and I had some porn company come to me and say, would you do one porno for like a million pounds? I'd be like, do you know what? Fuck it. I'll do that one and then I'm out, mate. Do you know what I mean? So that's when I say never. 
and yeah. you fuck it no. on one. No. no, no, not at all. No, nah. no. Nah. Yeah. I, I know what amount I want, and then I'm out, I'm done. Yeah. So, I think yeah. A lot of, I think there's a lot of girls that get into it now, and they just sort of, like young girls, they get into it, and then they'll, like, I know I met, I recently spoke to a girl recently, <clears> and she was like, I made like £1,500 on my first day just showing pictures of my boobs. And no. like, I was like, I was like, you know what, yeah, guys are giving girls some shit about this OnlyFans business, but I'm telling you, any money, I, as I said to them, if guys could make the same sort of money wiggling their dicks on camera, they'd be 100%. doing it. They'd be doing it. 100%. I, I would be the first person sitting there spinning around doing it. If I could make £1,500 a day doing that, and some of these girls are making crazy money, um, and <laughs> well, I had a girl on the other day, you've not probably seen the video, an OnlyFans girl, she said that... Um, some guy was asking her for as he had a special request. He wanted her to fart on the phone, and he was. Willing oh, to I fart. heard that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he wanted that. Oh, I'll be serious. Really, I'd get one of the kids to. I'll be like, fart on the phone. <laughs> He's a <fire> <laughs> yeah. So it's the same. It's the same guys that are having a big problem with this OnlyFans thing. Um, they're the ones that are buying these pics anyway. You know, it's just you know they're unhappy and they just can't. I just think you know they're unhappy in their life of what they're what's going on. I don't know. For some yeah. Reason, for some reason, men at the minute they just they just they've just lost the art of how to approach women and actually like you know actually meet real. Guess so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't really get out to be honest. I only reach out to my know. my followers. Um. I um yeah I don't know it's you just got to let that shit go over your head you have to you have to but you're only really going to be able to do that if you've got the confidence if you if you just know it deep in your soul what you're all about you're not ever going to allow that in so I think it's probably anyone getting into the industry they've got to get to that own personal place within themselves before they start doing it otherwise it's going to be a rough road for them but I just yeah I rate anyone that just pursues their goals and dreams and aspirations to be honest go for it you know fuck me go for it yeah everyone's got their own journey 100% you know um yeah it's life isn't it thank you babe thank you so much appreciate that and good luck to you as well and and everything that you're pursuing thank you (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, so I was just going to ask. Um, so if and you, is... Brucey baby, we're not leaving you out. Oh, okay, don't worry. Don't worry. Calls you, uh, you keep calling you Brucey. I, I know, said to him I last know. night when he rang, I said, I said, can I call you Brucey? And he went, okay. And I, kept, I said, I'm the only one allowed to call you Brucey. And he went, okay, honey bee. And I went, all right, Brucey baby. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm blushing over here. I'm blushing. Be <laughs> gone, <laughs> Okay, so Danny, this is this. So, um, honey, sorry, this is your opportunity to tell us where we find you. Um, you know, um, where can people find you? The name of your OnlyFans as well. Um, so we can tag that up here as well. I'll put that in all the comments and everything. So I'll, I'll put that in the description of the videos that I upload. So just tell people about your OnlyFans name and where they can find you and where to send where to send the um the fart requests to get you to fart on the phone and stuff. Sorry, you're literally breaking up so much. Oh, can no. you hear me? Yeah, just about my um my only fans. Yeah, so only fans nine, and we're like honey sexy sweet, which it, I haven't launched it yet. So it will be launched on the fourteenth of February. Okay. I am really really looking forward to Valentine seeing all that. I know how fucking cute, right? Oh, yeah. so I'm getting really really worked up for that. Hence why I'm so wet right now. Um. So, yeah, the 14th will be blowing up. And don't worry, I'll be putting all my links online. Um, it will be on my Insta bio, um, which you can find me on my Insta at Zoe Delahoy, which is Z-O-E-D-E-L-A-H-O-Y. And obviously, honey um, underscore SS on TikTok as well. You'll be able to bring the link there too. I've got you. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll have it all written down anyway. So Okay, cool. Um Danny, is there any, anything you're curious about um with honey you wanna ask? No, I think I've asked her if I'm just I'm excited to see where you're at. Yeah, I'd love and, to come back. Yeah, and I think it would be nice to keep like see how your journey's going on in a couple of months. Like I am just curious to see Me too. I'd love to come back. And what stories you all have to tell us. But yes. Yeah. 
I'm going to have got a good story to read out. Yeah. <laughs> to know what you're going to be asked. Because I'm very, very adventurous to read. So I'm, I'm up for anything. So there will be a lot of good stories. Yeah. Hang on. You've got body confidence. Do you know what I mean? You don't care. So that's the one yeah. to see if you're going to do that. You're in that industry. So yeah. Fucking smash it. Thank you, babe. <laughs> do you know what? It's mad because things like this and things like social media, that, that makes me a little bit nervous. But doing something explicit, I'm in my element. Yeah. So it's weird, isn't it? I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sorry, um, mentally wrong with me. <laughs> have you got your nipples out? You next time you'll be all right talking. I would. I don't want to come out. Can you see me? I keep touching my tits. It's like a comfort. It's like yeah. a comfort to me for like hold hold my fucking vagina or something. <laughs> Go all, right. For it. all right, all right, all right. Um, sorry, right, no, sorry, Brucey. No worries, no worries, no worries. Please, um, please, please, sorry. We're definitely gonna, we're time. definitely gonna have you back on again, honey. So, like, we're gonna definitely have you back on. Definitely have a like a, a much more. Full thank you, babe, well, and thank well. you so much for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. You are the first person to interview me. Oh, so, good. thank you so much, and Danny, it's been so lovely to meet you as well. Yeah, Both of you have been a star. Thank you so much. Okay. And um, I'll see you guys soon, I guess. Okay, we can't let you leave until we do it, until we see an outfit check. The fans are asking. Okay, check. all right, cool. One sec. <laughs> Go for it. Go on, girl. Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Brilliant. We just had a little strip, please. That was my first strip. Right, that would be 20 quid, please. Fair enough, fair enough. Guys, it's in Spearmint Rhino, that would have cost you I don't take quid. Check any transfers, thank you. Okay, okay. Um, thank you very much for coming on the show, um, honey. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for all the likes. Everyone, you have a